This is English shorthand dictation number 99 and the dictation speed is 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. Mr. Chairman, Sir, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on this important bill on behalf of YSR Congress Party. The Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Bill 2020 amends the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010, which regulates the acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution by individuals, associations, and companies. The bill prohibits acceptance of foreign contribution by public servants as defined under the Indian Penal Code. This would be extremely useful in preventing officers to accept undue favors from sources that are not in favor of the country's interest. The bill also says that any person seeking prior permission, registration or renewal of registration must provide the Aadhaar number of all its office bearers, directors or key functionaries as an identification document. This is also a good move to increase transparency and we welcome it. The bill further provides that the government may conduct an inquiry before renewing the certificate to ensure that the person making the application is not fictitious or benami, has not been prosecuted or convicted for creating communal tension or indulging in activities aimed at religious convergence, and has not been found guilty of diversion or misutilization of of funds among other conditions apart from that in the earlier act a person who receives foreign contribution must use it only for the purpose for which the contribution is received further they must not use more than 50 percent of the contribution for meeting administrative expenses this bill reduces this limit to 20% which is a very good move. In addition, under the earlier act, the government could suspend the registration of a person for a period not exceeding 180 days. The new bill says that such suspension may be extended up to an additional 180 days. In conclusion, I would like to mention that the bill is a timely effort by the government in ensuring transparency wherever foreign contributions are taken and shall also reduce malpractices wherever foreign funds are involved. This bill was much needed and our party supports the bill. Respected Sir, today we are discussing about a law which is undergoing the Third Amendment. This law was enacted in 2010 and became applicable from 2011. Subsequently, in 2016 and 2018, this law underwent two amendments. Now we are going to amend it for the third time which will certainly make it worthy of implementation. When our country became independent, some people were saying that that this was not the real freedom. They were ready to fight for real freedom by an armed struggle and used to garner resources from abroad. Then there were some other people who sought financial aid from foreign countries and utilized them for religious conversions. In 1954, a law was enacted in Odisha to prevent religious conversions. Later on, the MP government also enacted a similar law. Nowadays, Nowadays, many state governments in India have similar anti-conversion laws in place. The then Ministry of Home Affairs was well aware of the fact that funds from foreign countries were being utilized in conversion. Hence, the Ministry of Home Affairs had enacted a similar law in 1975 to prevent misuse of foreign contribution. So, it is nothing new. I am surprised why it is being opposed now. 
perhaps some people are apprehensive that their interests will be hindered in this country there is a lot of scope to indulge in philanthropic activities but when the government asks a person or institution about their source of fund whether they were utilized for personal indulgence or philanthropic activities one must be ready to submit the detailed report what is the objection here as far as i know all those institutions who accept foreign contribution should submit a report before the chief secretary through their district magistrates i know about some institutions which have not submitted any such reports for years together i have noticed it myself that in my state as well as in other states many high ranking officials have floated some ngos and are spending the foreign funds as per their their own desire hence i believe this is a timely and much needed step in the right direction the power that government is acquiring now to scrutinize should be exercised with competence and efficiency the right to keep a vigil on these institutions must rest with the chief secretary and the district administration they must pay adequate time and attention to these institutions a question is being raised as to why aadhar is essential i want to state here that aadhar like passport is one way of identification one can submit aadhar or passport as an identification document there are several alternatives as well so why should anyone object a beneficiary of the foreign contribution sometimes partakes his money and fails to submit correct information in my own state as well as in the entire country we have seen such cases where foreign contribution has disrupted our social fabric sir i support this bill wholeheartedly i would like to raise a few pointed questions and i would ask the honorable minister to reply to all the four questions because i myself come from a background of ngos and it is an unfortunate day that the way the treasury benches defended this bill was unfortunate but i will ask for four clarifications and then make my comments on what the treasury benches said my first point is this you have brought down the administrative cost and salaries from 50% to 20% how have you reached this magic number of 20% is that how you are going to control salaries and jobs and the number of people in ngos what is the logic behind this 50% and how can any government control the donors who gave the money tomorrow you will say that salaries of ceos need to be controlled it is a million dollar question second i clearly need a clarification because i think there is some disparity in understanding and we need to clarify this to the nation you should clarify why you need an aadhar compulsorily when the honorable supreme court repeatedly has ordered that it cannot be made compulsory the fcra account has to be opened only in delhi why should the account be opened only in delhi you have recommended only state bank of india what logic does it make in this age of technology where everything can be managed so well i cannot understand why only state bank of india has been recommended and other banks have been left out this is nothing but harassment are you trying to say that other banks are not capable of opening of fcra account or managing them the other point is that there is arbitrariness of 180 days and then ngo can stop work we do not think ngos do a bad work it is very unfortunate that one of the members from the treasury benches 
who is a former police officer made such a bad speech as a retired police officer from maharashtra what example did he give by saying that one ngo did not do good work i am really offended if he was the police commissioner what action did he take on them